يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وابتغوا إليه الوسيلة وجاهدوا وجاهدوا في سبيله لعلكم تفلحون. O you who believe, fear Allah, and seek means of nearness to Him, and carry out jihad in His way, so that you may succeed. إن الذين كفروا لو أن لهم ما في الأرض جميعا ومثله معه ليفتدوا به من عذاب يوم القيامة ما تقبل منهم ما تقبل منهم ولهم عذاب أليم. Surely, if the disbelievers have all that is in the earth. and more as much besides it, to pay it as ransom against the punishment of the Day of Judgment, it shall not be accepted from them, and they will have a painful punishment. They will wish to come out of the fire. but they will not be able to come out from there. For them there will be a lasting punishment. So verse number 35, Allah SWT is addressing to the believers, Ya ayu ladhina amana taqallah, O you people who believe, be conscious of them. Wabtahu ilayhi wasila and seek a meanings to the nearness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is a very broad definition we'll discuss in a moment. وَجَاهِدُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And struggle in the path of Allah. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلَهُونَ So that you may get everlasting, never-ending success. So, وَبْتَغُوا إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلَ Seek a means to nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we can come near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? First of all, we have to believe in Allah. Number two, we have to obey the commands of Allah. And Prophet ﷺ taught us how to get the connection to Allah. First is personal efforts. Second thing is making other connections. What is personal effort? First is observing the five pillars of Islam. Declaring shahada, performing salah. And Prophet says salah is the one when you want to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. you perform salah because in salah when we say Allahu Akbar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lift the hijab and a person comes in front of Allah comes in front of person Allah is always near but now we are coming near to Allah and then when we say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen all praises be to Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Hamadani Abdi Allah responds to our call so this is a conversation which we start a two-way conversation begin and then we become close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so during the salah everything we say Allah respond to us Prophet says, till unless your mind, your conscious efforts become distracted, start person, start wandering in his thoughts. So a man came to Jesus, uh, Ali Ajadi Allah Ta'ala know as a Jewish man, he says, how come you worry about your consciousness and distraction in the prayers? We never had such problems. So Ali Ajadi Allah Ta'ala says, shaitan is after those who have the treasure. You have nothing. Your prayers are not answered, so you are just being wasting your time. So you have nothing to bother you. But the person of faith has a faith and he's worshiping and he wants to, shaitan or devil wants to distract a man so he come and wonders because shaitan does the whispering. We have a thoughts, we have everything what we don't want to think, it comes in thought because mind is focused toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why we say before in the salah, A'udhu billahi min shaitan al-rajim, I seek protection of Allah from Satan, the curse one. And then Allah says, struggle in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you may have everlasting, never-ending success. So jahidu, do the jihad. There are two types of jihad we have mentioned before, a little more detail. One type of jihad is the battlefield, which is a war, a just war to protect the poor and needy and destitute and oppressed people. struggling for them whether they're believer or not but the believers are more right over non-believers in that regard so we should first protect our own would you care for your family before you do the others so that's what it is and we should do for both and that's why muslim went into spain they were invited to come and protect them from the tyrant ruler of the spain and muslim ruled there for 800 years and that's what is the history the second bigger jihad 
as Muslims were returning from, from the Battle of Badr, and they were uh, small in number, they were victorious and against thousand army of thousand men, and they were celebrating and rejoicing that we won. The Prophet ﷺ told them that do not be so overjoyed. Why? They said, Ya Rasulullah, we won the battle. He said, no, a bigger jihad is coming in front of you. And they said, what do you mean? See, companion asked for details. So Prophet says, when you have to observe every moment of life that you have to be observant with the commands of Allah, means getting up in the Fajr, making Salah in the time, doing all the righteous deeds, observing the commands of Allah, not to disobey the commands of Allah, taking care of your poor and needy and destitute, and fasting in the month of Ramadan, and observe your kind manners. So taking care of real rights, God's rights, your rights, Prophet's right, nation's right, creation's right, rights. This is a bigger jihad and we do not fulfill all those obligations so so that you may prevail for hereafter. That is Islam is a way of life, not just a religion of a rituals. Then further Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, kafaru law annahum lahum ma fil So if those who believe that is if in the earth what is there as beside wa mislahu ma'ahu liyftadu bihi min adhab yawm al qiyamah wa taqabbalu minhu he says, whatever is in the earth and the size of earth, the double of the size they will bring as a ransom to be accepted to relieve them from the punishment of hereafter, that will not be acceptable. And nobody can have that. It means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing it, uh, the price of this two earth size worth of treasure to get relief from the punishment of the day of judgment is one little kalma, la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. If you say that and observe the command of Allah, it is equal to bringing earth size of gold and wealth to ask for ransom, not acceptable. So you could imagine the most precious thing in the world, in the universe, in the entire creation is shahada, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad the testimony that the baptism of Islam is being a Muslim declaration of none is worthy of worship except Allah and Muhammad is the last messenger of Allah. With this declaration, we declare also that we believe in one Allah and we believe in all the prophets from Adam to Jesus to last Muhammad, peace be upon him, and all the Muslim from Adam to Jesus to Moses to Muhammad, peace be upon all of them. And then we believe in the angels of Allah, we believe in the hereafter, we believe in the predestiny, we believe in all the scriptures, we believe in everything. So we got comprehensive universal faith and Islam owns humanity. This is what it is. So how could it be more valuable? Anything could be than this. So Subhanahu wa Taala is saying that yuriduna an yukhriju min al-nare wa hum ma hum bi-kharijin minha wa lahum azab al-maqim. And they will try to offer this much wealth if they did, which they can never have, to get freedom from the fire, but they will not. So there's nothing equals. Shahada and Prophet says every baby is born in the Shahada in the fitra of Islam, la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasul. But the death time, person should say la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasul. We should. Do, that's why scholar says or elder says that you should do as much zikr of Allah you can. And now is with reference to waktu ghalihi wasila seek the uh, means for the nearness. Wasila is a kind of a resources. What brings you close to Allah? So personal action and also if you are in the company of good people, righteous people, and they pray for you, your parents is the number one after Allah and the messenger. And then your uh, friends and colleagues and a company of the scholars and uh, elders, the shiur who you sit with, the righteous people, the people who have knowledge and their spiritual knowledge, so you can get all of that from them. And that brings you more closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what we call awliya Allah, the friends of Allah, their companionship. In other words, if you if you sit with the professor to learn your class, he tells you shortcut how to do it, right? But if you do try to learn the textbook of arithmetic by yourself or physics, you can spend whole life, you can never get it. So because the scholars have the knowledge of how to get near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the way is sending salawat upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam all the time. If you say sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam in your free time and doing astaghfar, astaghfirullah, and saying glory to Allah subhanallah, glory be to Allah, subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanallah rabbi al -azim. glory be to Allah the highest and glory be to him who is greatest and and uh, all these words of praising Allah and thanking and showing you gratitude will bring you to close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and taking care of parents absolutely that is one of the most important thing if you do not treat your parents righteously you're not going to get anything everything will be thrown on your face
So let's listen to the next verse. So my point is seeking closeness to Allah SWT is doing good to the Allah's creation and with every level, whatever we can do. Uh, let's listen to the verse number 38. The punishment for theft and Islamic punish, uh, rule. As for a man or a woman who commits theft, cut off their hands of both to punish them for what they earned, comma, underscore a deterrent punishment from Allah. Allah is mighty, wise, who, who. Whoever repents after his transgression and corrects himself, then Allah shall relent towards him. Surely, Allah is most forgiving, very merciful. So verse number 38 and 39, Allah says, uh, Whoever repents of his transgression and corrects himself, then Allah shall This is the punishment of a theft in Islam. The Islamic system is very strict about it. And you will find that once you have punishment established, people will abstain from such crime. In the time of Islamic rules and still today in Middle Eastern countries, you don't see theft as much of a major problem. Why? Because the punishment is such a harsh one that if you are proven to be stealing. So now, how much is the theft? Some fuqa says everything. The majority of the scholar thinks that you have to have a reason. And um, if somebody is hungry and poor and destitute and he steals something to eat, that is not punishable crime because the person is hungry. And the narration of the story is a man came to, uh, uh, brought a, a person with him uh, and he brought to, to Prophet, peace be upon him, and said, Ya Rasulullah, he was stealing from my crop and his hand should be cut off. So the Prophet asked the other person, why were you stealing? He said, O Messenger of Allah, my kids and my wife and family, my parents and I are hungry for several days and we did not have anything so I just took enough grain for his, from his crop to feed my family. So Prophet Sallallahu turned to the landlord. He said, you should be ashamed of yourself. Your brother was hungry and without food and he took enough to feed his family. You should have actually offered him extra food so that he would not be hungry rather than them bringing him to me to that to punish him. So according to scholar, if a person steals in the time of famine or hunger or not having food, then that person should not be punished. Even if he did it in the other common time where there's no punishment needed, if a person is hungry and he, he resorted to, to stealing food for the survival, that is not a crime in Islamic Sharia. But if somebody is robbing somebody's business and taking away gold and jewelry and whatnot and the wealth of this person for another other than robbery reason, then that person should be punished. And the punishment is to cut their hand, first to be the, I think, left hand, then the right hand, and then the left elbow to the right elbow, and then the left foot and the right foot, because that person should be, a, this is the punishment. In Islam, there's another thing about that. There's not a concept much of a keeping people in jail forever and paying the tax dollars. And quickly to be summoned, found guilty, punished. If not guilty, let go. And there have to be four witness of that and there should be a pro acceptance of the crime. So it's, I'm not much a scholar about these details, but the thing is, uh, you can consult with the scholars um, about these details. Uh, according to the scholar of Hadith, it should be about one quarter of a dinar or three dirham. The, that is a gold, quarter of a gold coin or value or three or of a silver coin value. Um, below that amount, if somebody is stole, you cannot cut his hand. Um, 
rest of the details are in other places. So in other words, it's a deterrence for theft and steal, and also a person should not be begging. So they should work and make a living. Uh, and if whoever repented after this act of theft or whatnot, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving. So we should be kind and merciful. Um, there have been story and details about narration when somebody stole, a man had his hand cut off, he stole again and he's had another injury or uh, punishment. It is considered very harsh to look in the worldly life, but it protects the others. So theft is an intentional act. It is not a, um, there's a kleptomaniac, those who are psychiatrically ill people. They are rich and they still steal from the places. They're not to be cut off, but there was a case when Prophet Sallallahu conquered Mecca, uh, opened the Mecca, and there was a war girl named Fatima, and she was caught in stealing. And Osama bin Zaid was the son of Zaid radiallahu anhu, who was the um, adopted son of Prophet. And Prophet loved Osama very much. And people tried to resource and tried to talk to Prophet to forgive her, Fatima. And finally they reached Osama. They thought that Osama is the only one Prophet will never say no to. And one day Osama radiallahu ta'ala anhu came after a shop prayer, walked behind Prophet and asking for something. And Prophet noticed his footstep after Isha Salah in the dark when he was walking. Prophet says, who is this, Osama? He said, Ya Rasulullah. So Prophet turned to him and he said, Osama, what is it that you want? Because Prophet knew Allah had informed him what Osama is coming from. And he wanted to say, but he could not speak open his mouth. And Prophet said, Osama, if you're asking me to pardon that girl Fatima, you should know if the theft was done or stealing was done by my daughter Fatima binti Muhammad, daughter of Muhammad, peace be upon him, I would have given same punishment. In other words, public safety and rights are above individual. And this is where the Islamic law is protection and safety. So we should know that Islam have a justice if a girl stole without a need of, of, of a need of the food. So the rules are for everybody. And this is about how Islam teaches us. Next verse, ayat number one, uh, and verse number 40. Alam ta'lam anna Allah lahu mulku samawati wal ardi yu'adhibu man yasha yu'adhibu man yasha wa yaghfiru liman yasha wallahu ala kulli shay'in qadeer Do you not know that to Allah Alone belongs the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. He punishes whomsoever he wills and forgives whomsoever he wills. Allah is powerful over everything. Oh. Yeah. So as we hear that this last verse, do you not know Allah is the king of all and kingdom belongs to him in the heavens and earth and whatever is in between. And he forgive whoever he wants and whoever he want to punish, he will punish. This is our belief. This should be our belief. No matter good or bad, this is why the faith is tested. To be persevering and uniting and observing. If we observe faith in the peaceful time, that's easy. But when we have a hard time and that's when you stay observant as a faithful person, that's where the faith is tested. And the Prophet and his companion have gone through it. There were three years of incarceration in open air, that was the concentration camp for the Muslims. Three years, Shoaib Abi Talib, Prophet and his family and those Muslims of that time, entire Muslim Asian nation was put in there. That Shoaib Abi Talib, there were Meccan boycotted them. This is what we see what is happening to people of Gaza. That is they are in an open air concentration camp, no food, no water, no business. They are not allowing medicine and help. This was the same situation Prophet and his companion lived for three years. And we see this occupation of Palestine and we see the concentration camp, which is turned as an open prison. Now it's a concentration camp. They go and shoot whoever they want, kill whoever they want, and they do not get accounted for. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for them and for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them victory over the enemies of faith. Let's listen to the verse number 41.